My next guest is a special friend of the show, Desmond Mead, who is the executive director of the Florida Rights and Restoration Coalition. Desmond was awarded a prestigious MacArthur Genius Grant on Tuesday. He's one of 25 recipients who will receive $625,000. Desmond, who was formerly incarcerated, has fought to restore voting rights to people disenfranchised because of criminal convictions and for those still incarcerated. Desmond, so glad to have you back and big congratulations to you. I swear no one is more deserving of this incredible honor. Yo, D, I am just so happy to be with you this evening. And yes, it is. It's, it's a huge honor. And I'm still trying to process this, so. <laughs> well, how did, you, how did you get the news that you had been awarded this grant? And, and what went through your head? Well, let me tell you. At first, I thought it was a, a, a crank call or one of those, um, those spam calls because this number just kept <laughs> you know, calling back to back. And uh, I was driving somewhere. I think I was driving back home. And then when I finally got someone on the line and, and they told me, I had to pull over, you know, and I'm not going to lie. I kind of teared up a little bit because it seemed so surreal. You know, I've never would have dreamed that I would have received uh, something like the MacArthur Genius Fellowship. I, it was, this is something that was in my wildest dreams. And, you know, just hearing somebody tell me that, I kept having to, to pinch myself, you know, but it was... It was surreal. Well, what is receiving, what is this receiving, um, this fellowship? What does it mean to you, given what you've experienced in your life? You know, so when I, when I first started, started thinking about it, you know, I was like, oh, my God, this is another platform. Because I remember when I won uh, Time Magazine, when, they, when I was one of the 100 most influential in, 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 the, um, in the world, and I thought Time's Magazine had had missed the mark by putting Dwayne The Rock Johnson on the cover, right? I thought they should have put me on the cover, right? Because it sent a message <laughs> to go. everybody. <laughs> Yo, no, for real, you know, because it, it sends a message to everyone that you don't have to be a movie star, a, a celebrity, a, a, a billionaire, or a politician to have an impact in your community, right? To do something great. Yes. And I thought that that, that 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 was a message that our country really needed to hear more than anything. And so when I when I got the news about MacArthur, I was like, here's another opportunity to do two things right off the bat. Number one, just let there are people out there, man, that's suffering, people out there that that's facing seemingly insurmountable odds. You no, know, either they or their family member going through drug addiction, incarceration, homelessness, things of that nature. And by seeing me get this honor, that that it could at least instill some type of hope in them, you know. And, and, and so I, yeah. you know, I am grateful for this platform because in, in addition to that as well, you know, it helps folks, you know, like we're going through some crisis here with, with people with felony convictions and like that, that employer could now look at, at a person with a criminal history and say, hey, that person could have something to offer or that, or the housing, uh, the landlord or the housing authority could look at someone and not be afraid to rent them a home because of their criminal history. And then, of course, people would be more susceptible in allowing people like me with a history access to the ballot box. Well, Dwayne Betts, uh, who I know is a personal friend of yours and also uh, formerly incarcerated, was also a recipient of, of this grant. Does that indicate to you that there are some changes in perceptions about formerly incarcerated people? Yeah, you, you're trying to make me cry, yo, deep. You know, because that, you know, that was what I, what I said before was how I felt when I heard the news. But let me tell you, when I opened up and because no one knew who the other recipients were until 12 o'clock on Tuesday. And when I was able to go to the website and the first face I seen was Dwayne Betts, man, I just cried because I was like, wow, it's two of us, two formerly incarcerated people are now like named genius. And I just started thinking about, you know, even some of the people before us, man, that have done so much work and how we've been silenced and left out of the conversation. We geniuses now. We can't, they can't leave us out of conversations now. You know, when you're talking about <laughs> a, a, a police brutality or mass incarceration and other issues that impact, you know, our society, that, man, this, this recognition by, by MacArthur 
really uh, really establishes the voices of of people who are directly impacted. And I have, I am so happy for my brother Dwayne because I knew he was a genius a long time ago. Well, Dwayne tweeted yesterday about having been accepted um, into Howard University, uh, receiving a full scholarship, and then having that all taken away when they found out he had a felony record. You said that a similar thing happened to you. Can you talk about that and whether receiving this fellowship gives you a feeling of vindication? Yeah, in so many fronts, you know. Uh, but as it relates to the, to the education piece, I know my situation wasn't as bad as, as Dwayne. You know, I, but I do remember applying to HBCUs, and I mean, they gave me the hardest time because of my my criminal history, and and it really it really really tore my heart because you know I, I applied to Ivy Leagues, you know I I, I was waitlisted uh, at um, uh, uh, I think University of Notre Dame, and you know I was given a, a second look by University of Chicago, and here I am you know, trying to get into an HBCU and they were like having problems with the fact that I had a criminal history, you know, in spite of the fact that, you know, I've had like glowing letters of recommendation, but you know, I, there's no bitterness there because all of that was part of the plan. All of that was part of the process. Yes. All right. Because there can't be a testimony without a test. Right. And so that just add to the story because there's so many people that applied for college and got turned down for various reasons. And they may have thought that, well, that's the end of the road for them. Uh, but you know, in my story, they can see that, you know, I still was persistent. Uh, uh, I persevered and I just took it to, kept it moving and took it to a whole new level. Well, you went to law school, all right, but uh, you were denied admission to the bar because of your felony record. You got this amazing award. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even care about being admitted to a bar, but have you thought about applying for admission in other states where some formerly incarcerated people have been admitted? Listen, you and everybody else across this country know that there's more than enough work in Florida, you know, with, with the governor <laughs> that we have, with the issues that we have around COVID-19, with the stand your ground and with the anti-protests and and, and, and felon disenfranchisement and fines and fees. There's more than enough work for, for me right here in, in, in Florida. But you said something that brought you know, another thought to mind, you know, that even though I am, you know, I, I was told that this award is the most prestigious and largest award given to an individual outside of the Nobel Peace Prize, right? And when I mm. think about, you know, when I think about that, right, you know what comes to my mind? that I still can't uh, uh, practice law because my civil rights have not been restored. I don't have a pardon, right? Uh, I, I still would have difficulties uh, uh, owning or even renting a home because of my criminal history. And guess what? The other employers, if I were to go right now and apply for a job, would not even give me a second look because I would have had to check that box, right? And so at mm. the end of the day, I think that, you know, I want to just use this opportunity this moment and this genius tag really to 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 push a message out there that says just like a chain is only as strong as its weakest link so is our society we cannot become greater right our cities our states our country cannot become greater until we empower the people who are most weakened by systems of oppression and discrimination and a narrative that says that some lives are less valuable than others Right. And so by strengthening people like me, right, when you allow people like me second chances, as you can see, we can go all the way to the top. Well, Desmond, I, I got to ask, my final question is, what are you going to do with that grant money? Because <laughs> it's a lot of money. <laughs> you know, listen, that's <laughs> it's a lot of thinking to have to go through there. There's a lot of tax, impl personal tax implications that's attached to that. But one thing I do know, um, I, and I've learned a long time ago, I think last year I received the, the Puffin Award. And uh, along with that award came a uh, uh, $100,000 check, right? And I remember taking, immediately taking $75,000 of that check and putting it up as a matching grant to raise money for fines and fees. And we was able to raise over $200,000 with that 75,000 and end up paying fines and fees for people throughout the state of Florida. 
And what I've what I've learned through life is that when you take the blessings that God gives you and use it to bless others, that He's going to come back and bless you even more, right? Than your wildest mm -hmm. dreams, and 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 this is part of that. But I got to keep that cycle going. So I know no matter what it is that I decide, and I know I have to take care of some personal things. But what I do know is that this grant is somehow or another going to be applied to improving the life of someone who has been impacted by the criminal justice system. There's someone right now that's incarcerated, uh, particularly in the state of Florida, that's going to greatly benefit from this grant. I can tell you that much. I, I have no doubt. Listen, no one needs an award to do good work, uh, to touch the lives of, of so many. You've done that, but I'm so glad that your genius is being recognized. Ladies and gentlemen, executive director of the Florida Rights and Restoration Coalition, and now a MacArthur Fellow and this year's Genius Grant recipient, Mr. Desmond Mee. Congrats again, my friend. We couldn't be more proud of you.